Hi everyone, it is James here at Seton, and today I wanted to show you how to get My Media Center up and running, not only on your Windows Media Center PC with the My Media Center services, but also on any of the apps. So whether it's the Android, iOS, Windows Phone, <clears throat> or Windows 8 uh, Metro app, I uh, want to walk you through the process. It's very similar on all the apps. Um, and today we'll be showing the uh, Windows 8 app specifically to get you through the process. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to install the My Media Center services um, on your Windows Media Center PC. Now these are important because they allow the uh, mobile applications to communicate with your PC um, and then the My Media Center services um, talks to Media Center directly. So it's this kind of intermediate layer that you go apps, services, Media Center. And the, and the services not only allow communication um, and, and scheduling recordings and playback on your Media Center PCs or extenders, but they also um, will pull movie metadata for your local movie um, files as well. So the first thing you want to do is head to seatoncorp.com uh, and select mobile apps. And that will bring you to the My Media Center page. Um, you've probably been here before if you've um, already been browsing. Um, and from here, um, you can see in-depth um, videos for Android, iPad, and iPhone, Windows Phone uh, on our gallery page. But you want to head to the Downloads page. And from here, there's two important steps. Step one, obviously, download and install the My Media Center services for your PC. So Windows 7, any flavor. And for Windows 8, you will need Pro with Media Center. Um, and you can look on Microsoft.com for additional information for the add-in because uh, you will need Media Center on that PC, obviously. So I'm here on my Windows 8 PC. Again, you could be on your Windows 7 PC. And I'm just going to click Download, and this will go ahead and download the My Media Center Services Installer. Now, additionally on this page, you'll see a setup guide, which is an in-depth setup guide for um, getting your My Media Center up and running, and also um, includes uh, information about the movie metadata as well. And then also the remote access guide as well. So if you want to access, if you want to have access with My Media Center outside of your house, I'll show you how to set up port forwarding and additional security and things like that. So we'll just go ahead and uh, launch the installer here. And it's pretty quick to go through. You want to leave all the default settings on and just go ahead and run through the installation process. Now from here, you should just be up and running and good to go. Or you can opt to launch the uh, my Media Center config utility. Is this down? So this is what it looks like. Uh, and I'll expand it a little bit here. So as you can see, most of the default configuration settings will be just fine for you. Now from here, you have the movie libraries. So for instance, here on my desktop, I have a folder called uh, Other Movies. And I have a bunch of folders. And you can read more about this later. But we'll just go ahead and select that folder. And television is coming soon for local television files. However, obviously, we already um, pull in your scheduled recordings, recorded TV, and everything like that. Um, and then you have the advanced section. Um, and you want to note some of the things in here. If you want metadata to be pulled automatically, you'll want to turn all these on. Um, the defaults are pretty much good just for generating media center data, uh, renaming folders and files, downloading artwork. So this is the artwork that will be associated with the different movies. Um, and there's a bunch of other things in here as well. There's two other important settings that you want to take a look at. Uh, the first one is the network settings. So if you have any remote shares, so if your movies are on like a home server or on a remote share somewhere, you want to enter your username and password into here so the uh, services have access to actually start playback or pull metadata for those files. Now if you are on Windows 8, um, you can enter your at you know, email account on here as well. Um, so it has worked for some people and not for others. Um, so what you want to do as well, you, depending on what you have it set up, so let's say you're sharing on a Windows 8 PC uh, all your movies, you could actually create a local account and then enter those credentials here. Additionally down here you have this network discovery. This is what allows us to Wi-Fi scan um, and automatically find where your media center services are installed from the mobile apps. Um, but you also want to note your internal IP and external IP here. Um, and then what port numbers they're set to, as if for some reason we can't Wi-Fi scan, 
um, for instance on a lot of Windows 8 PCs or laptops the NICs um, might be a little bit different your networking card um, and there's actually been a lot of issues that Microsoft's currently working through to get the discovery aspect working properly so you want to note these you know internal and external and the port numbers are running on um, we default to 5832 and uh, you can change those of course that you want to run on it's important if you're running other services as well that you have installed maybe other media center services that you don't use the same port uh, number they should be unique or also be a conflict um, additionally from here you have the other tab which allows you to um, specify your password if you want to and you can specify the password in the apps as well we have a very long in-depth uh, video on our YouTube channel explaining the password feature as well and then you also have the about where you can get access to the setup guides remote access guides different channels um, of um, this, this, the services that you can get running um, and then also there's a diagnostic here which will allow you to um, run the diagnostic to make sure everything is up and running properly um, just to ensure um, that that is running as well and if they're not running and this one's working fine on my PC don't worry about that so now you want to go ahead and, and, and go ahead and run um, the My Media Center app on any of your devices so I'm going to go ahead and switch PCs because I'm going to be showing off Windows 8. So you want to switch PCs to um, another one. Remember on Windows 8 you cannot run uh, Metro apps, um, the, the Metro My Media Center app on the same PC as your Windows Media Center. Microsoft blocks that local communication on the same PC. So unfortunately there's no way. We call that the loopback. Um, so the, the idea is that you'll be using another laptop, desktop, or Surface tablet, or any other tablet as well, to control your Media Center PC. So I'm going to go and switch over to another PC right now. So here I am on another um, Windows uh, 8 PC, and I'm just going to go ahead and launch the My Media Center app. Uh, and this will be the first introduction uh, that you have here. So some of the features that we offer, and then a step-by-step -step guide, really, to get it up and running. So if you don't have the services installed, which we just did, there's a link here. Also, if you prefer HD, so for premieres and movies on tonight, um, and uh, default for searching for HD, you can switch to HD uh, only. Um, and then if you want from right here, you can say scan network, um, which will go out and scan everything. I'm just going to go ahead and manually enter a, P a new PC here. So um, just because I don't want to expose any of my internal and external settings out. So. Uh, I have gone ahead and just added my internal and uh, IP and port. I don't have a password to specify, I would do it there. Your external IP and port, you don't have to specify if you're only using it internally. And then MAC address is only for Wake on LAN. You do not need to specify this if you are not interested in the Wake on LAN functionality. Uh, we have a separate video explaining that as well. So let's go ahead and save that here. Now it shows up in my list. And then I'll just go ahead and hit Start My Media Center. Now from here, this is a page you go to every single time. Um, however, our default settings here are to actually auto connect. There's this advanced setting called Auto Connect. Most users only have one Media Center PC, so we just automatically connect to it every single time that you start up. You could turn that off, so if you wanted to hop back and forth between home theater PCs that you have in the house, you can do that as well. From here, we have some co um, common troubleshooting uh, things here. So from here, if you select a PC, if you forgot to specify your password, go ahead and edit it and then specify your password. And then you can also ensure that the date and time are in sync on the current tablet that you're running or PC you're running on, and then the separate Windows Many Media Center PC that you installed the services on. That's important just because we have different security protocols in place. So you need to ensure that the date, time, and time zones are in sync uh, on there. And then for setting up remote access, um, you can just go ahead and read our guide. Of course, we're always available for support on Twitter. It's at SetonMyMC, or you can email us mymediacenter at setoncorp.com. Our usual response time is pretty quick, unless, you know, it's the middle of the night and I'm sleeping. Um, so from here, you just want to head and click connect. Um, uh, what this will go out and it'll do is it'll ensure that you have. Um, what services you have, it'll pull in the correct information and artwork. And from right here, I've already connected. Um, so on startup, I've loaded all my channels, I've loaded new recordings, schedule recordings, movies, everything like that. 
and I won't go too in depth on the rest of them because um, you can watch the videos for the Windows 8. But this would be very similar, the same exact thing. The only difference um, between the Windows 8 and any of the other apps, so the Android, iOS, and Android apps, is that you still have a scan button, you still have the ability to add manually um, on all of those, um, and just the user interface is a little bit different um, for entering those. Uh, so I hope that this um, gets you up and running on My Media Center. So if you have any questions, again, feel free to contact us at mymediacenter at setoncorp.com or on Twitter at setonmymc. Um, and again, I'm James, and thank you again.